Okay, hello everyone and welcome to this discussion on the metaverse and what we should be using actionable intelligence for in order to understand what businesses should be doing in this, but also jobs that are going to be new and as it relates to education as well. There's also a question I'm going to be asking, which is, are we going about this at all the right way? And that's where you, each one of you in the audience today, I hope you'll take away from this some key points in particular that this is very new and that you can influence it. You can influence it in the right direction. You can influence it in different ways in order to make a difference. So let's jump, jump into this and take a look at what's happening. Overall, first of all, what's the difference between these two pictures? Well, on the left side, perhaps is just a screenshot. On the right side is a, you know, $30,000, $100,000 NFT of that picture. So right now, non-fungible tokens, the so what isn't there, right? If, you're, if you go to your friend and say, hey, I just bought this great board ape, look at it on my phone. They're like, well, I just took a screenshot too. But of course, what Board Ape is providing now with their NFT is a community. Some This is the bar that they're setting up, the virtual reality experience, the metaverse experience, that those who got in on this early or, or are buying their way in now at significant sums are going to be able to connect to. So non-fungible tokens are moving from art into some sort of engagement. There needs to be more utility value from these things. Well, in the metaverse and wherever we have the virtual reality, there's some interesting things that get to happen because when we get to customer engagement, that's where manufacturers and the retail user finally are connecting after years of having middlemen, distributors and retailers and so forth. So the we makeup company saw a higher click-through rate when they provide it as a manufacturer direct to consumer augmented reality for lipstick. Nike and Mercedes are providing people with the ability to customize things online. There's a great store in Manhattan that lets you go from virtual into reality of the Nike shoes that you'd like to have. And then Gucci and Roblox, what a combination. Watch out for your little kids. They're gonna get spoiled too soon. Roblox, the little kid version of Minecraft tied up with Gucci in order to bring a world of fashion to young people. Talk about starting a little bit too early, perhaps with the thousand dollar pocketbooks. We're gonna get a chance to see the, the increase of data that we have from various platforms. If you had just a newspaper, you would know perhaps that the medium was received, like how many people purchased your newspaper, but that's it. What they read, what they bought, what they did, nothing. Having a website, we got to track cookies, right? Did they read the content? Maybe how long did they stay there? Did they click on something a bit? But social media gave us that engagement, the content, also the network, who are your friends, family, etc. The metaverse takes it one step further. It allows us to see, did they purchase it, right? Because here you're completely immersed. You look, you click, you purchase, and then you also wear you use, you tell your friends about it, the whole stack, all your life, everything you've done with that network is now visible digitally. And so as a result, hyper-personalization gets to even more personalized. So this is where we can see the metaverse is providing some additional data about people that use it. But then in the metaverse, right, there's this idea that Things should cost money. You should have to pay for Nike sneakers, pay for that Gucci bag. But that almost goes against what the metaverse is, right? We have this finally, this resourceless, it only takes one more click, one more pixel, and you have another set of shoes. Why should you have to pay? Hey, you want more land? Boom, here's more land. Why are we paying for real estate right now? Why limit the access? Why are we making the metaverse equivalent to the scarcity that we have in reality? Is it purely for commercial purposes? 
is it that Gucci, instead of selling, you know, a hundred bags at $10,000 now wants to sell a billion bags at one cent, you know, what are they, what's going to be happening here really? And why are we going down a scarcity route? Well, listen, we're just a quick introduction. Those are some of the key things I want us to talk about and for us to at least let you share and think about after this. But this is who I am and we're all made up of data. And the big words here mean more to me, but the small words also make up who I am. And there's a few key words that I want you to know from today's presentation, which is know, decide, and act. I hope that you're to, you'll get to see some new things. You'll know more. You'll be able to decide. Do you want to do something about it? And if so, what action you might take? I don't want you to just sit back and enjoy the the discussion and maybe not do anything. Let's go and do something together. And ultimately, the reason that companies are going into these areas is for actionable intelligence. Let's be very clear about this. It's the right information in the right person's hands at the right time to improve outcomes. Not business analytics, because analytics is the study of math and no business has time for someone to study math. Not artificial intelligence, because we're not close to Isaac Asimov's view of artificial intelligence. Actionable intelligence. I need something today, and I'm the customer. Can the company deliver it today? That's the company that's going to get my money. That's about having the right information in the right person's hands at the right time to do what? Improve outcomes, improve sales, improve delivery costs be able to meet the customer at their time of need. Critical difference. Words are so important. And so I'm coming to you today from the National University of Singapore School of Computing, where we do research and experiential learning. And we have a series of initiatives that are all into FinTech. We have our Crystal Center, which is a deep research center on crypto, crypto, on security, on technology and algorithms. The FinTech Lab I'm director of, which does experiential education. We, have, we house the Singapore Blockchain uh, Innovation Program, but that's for all the universities here in Singapore, and there's matching grants for companies that want to look into blockchain or NFTs and so forth. The FinTech Society, 200 young people on campus that are all into FinTech, machine learning, and so forth. And then we also help mid-careers, you know, who have been hit hard in COVID-19 time and the retail and travel space and help them upskill into fintech because there's so many open positions in technology in Singapore and around the world. The competition for good talent is really high and we're trying to make sure to meet that goal for both the people that need the roles and also the companies that are looking for the talent. And so let's dive a little bit deeper into the metaverse here. You know, Facebook delivered their view. Mark Zuckerberg got up and said, listen, this is the way this picture is the way that the metaverse is going to look sometime. And so it looks great, right? Like this is like a 4K movie. People are gonna be dealing cards to you in real time and so forth. And you're gonna be able to in incorporate Zoom-like functions. Wow, real life and also your avatar all connecting together. So these two ladies are walking around the street in San Francisco and all of a sudden, they see this picture on a wall and it's augmented reality. And the augmented reality is able then to display and show up inside of the metaverse at the same time. So Facebook's vision, reality, augmented reality, all the way into virtual reality, all at the same time. And by the way, let's pay for it. In order for the artist to share this, a NFT, a non-fungible token, a contract, is then sent to those folks that are sitting there in the metaverse. And it says, would you like to pay to watch this augmented reality show? Yes. And then the transaction's done, the artist is paid, maybe Facebook takes a cut, we don't know. And then ultimately then the fun is had. So with virtual reality, we get to try things out. Uh, all the things that we share can be a fact fraction of the retail world's price, right? It can come out in 3D as well. But, and it's also potentially more physically safe, like how you're going to get hurt. But then we should really look carefully at what that looks like as well. On the reality side, there's purchase before using, there's scarce resources and more. But man, can't the metaverse bring us some, if it's in that beautiful view that we just saw, the 4K high definition, 
it'd be great. The impact on education could be high. We could have a classroom again, even though it's COVID-19, we'd all be together. I'd be able to see you, you know, I'd be talking on the stage. I'd see your interaction. I'd see your face, your, and so forth, as opposed to me just broadcasting to you, which is so 19, you know, 40 TV station type of thing. And so here we are, we can leverage a real deep immersive uh, experience. Of course, this is Second Life today. Second Life has been around for 20 years and the quality of this immersive experience is quite low because we don't have the graphics cards, we don't have the network, and we just don't have right now the math to get a high speed immersive 4K universe to your desktop anywhere in the world. And so what we do have is a metaverse like this. This is the metaverse. You can set up a town. This is Town Star by Gala Games. The uh, crypto is called Town. And this is the meta one of the type of metaverse. A coming one is Decentraland. A far, these are a far cry from you know, the meta version of the metaverse. And we can imagine that's probably with hardware, software, network that all need to be upgraded you can see this five to 10 years from now. But there are real jobs that are gonna be impacted right now today. Like I said, Nike, Gucci, they're all jumping in on this. And so there are jobs like creators that can take the shoe that you're wearing right now and make it into the metaverse. Well, not just one metaverse, meta, but also Decentraland, maybe over in uh, Second Life and so forth. There's so many different metaverses coming up that one artist can create it across five or six of them right now until we see which ones come out to be the winner, right? And NFTs finally come to life there. Let's take a look at two different ways in this, but one is that you have the subscription service. You go into a bar, you didn't subscribe to the NFT, no music, so you better go in there and get ready to pay. Let's look at architects, right? They're building buildings today, limited space in real world, unlimited space in the metaverse, and so Meta has a view of architects now creating their architecture structures inside the metaverse too. And perhaps having this incorporated augmented reality at the same time sharing the architecture diagram together. And how are you gonna have a business meeting in the metaverse without there being a really well architected office space again? So we're taking the architect's job and saying, hey, listen, there's only a limited number of buildings and so forth in real life and saying, wow, you can build these all over in anywhere that you want to. So the jobs can go so much further. For clothing designers, music makers, NFTs come to life again. Here's two ladies, they're at a metaverse party in Meta's universe, that high de definition 4K again, and they walk in, here's this NFT and virtual merchandise you can pick up Maybe you want to help charity as well and donate, or maybe you'd like to go ahead and buy that new great set of cloth as well. Well, what we're going to know is that there are some challenges to this, right? So first is comfort. Right now, the metaverse doesn't look anything like what Facebook has in mind. But if you do go under the glass, if you do decide to wear virtual goggles, the discomfort is high. So We've got a comfort issue right now. Can I really teach a class for three hours and have 100 students under virtual reality goggles? Very uncomfortable. The second is price. All they, the good ones cost $200. And so how do we deploy this around the world? Third is security, whole new way of data that's gonna be shared and also new risk as well. And last is the development cycle. Are we really gonna see this come to life? Second life again, 20 plus years old and still struggling, you know, in terms of daily concurrent users, 57,000, just 57,000, not millions, not billions, hanging out in the one of the oldest metaverses that's around and one of the most well-defined, by the way, in terms of economy and development and capability and so forth as well. It saw a big drop down to 19,000. The peak was eight, only 88,000 users back in 2009. Privacy. What about privacy in the metaverse? Privacy is fake news, right? What are we going to do with this? Before, at least when you looked at a web page, they didn't know whether you purchased. On social media, you talked about what you purchased, maybe. In, in, in metaverse, 
whatever you do, whatever t-shirt you wear, whatever, whoever you talk with, what you talk about, everything, how you looked when you were talking with them, your expressions, your feelings are all there. And plus, think about Singapore and other countries that have, let's just say, a more dynamic in terms of sharing culture and a culture where group is more, sometimes more important than the individual. If you wear just whatever t-shirt that you want that says whatever it wants to say on in a physical campus, you would be booted out. You'd be taken, you know, in the campus security say, hey, go home, change your t-shirt. But in the metaverse now, I can have a campus. Why do I limit it to 100 students? I can have 100,000. I can have a million students. But yet in Singapore's context, there's certain things that you shouldn't wear. In certain Muslim countries or even Christian countries, there's certain things you shouldn't do. And so now, how do I look at a class of 100,000 people? No way. I have to have an algorithm run and check everyone and see, are they in compliance with the local law? But what's local law? Local law, I'm in a metaverse. Which country am I in? What server am I on? Who knows? Government intervention is going to be an aspect here as well. So what does international regulation look like? Where is privacy? Where are you? What country are you in? If, some, if something does go wrong, which judge where is going to take care of that problem? Or is it done by an algorithm? You automatically get fined, you automatically get booted, whatever it might be. And is that quote unquote fair, depending on the differences in culture and so forth? What does this look like? Identity verification, hiring, et cetera. But what we know is that the last 20 years will not be at all like the next 20 years. And all of you can make a difference. I'm looking forward to you all keeping this phrase in mind. No decide act. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Listen, look forward to hearing from you. Love to keep in touch. Here's some of the links and ways that we can connect virtually, of course. Uh, but here's COVID-19 and who knows what's next. Let's do our part, everyone. And it's all up to and in our hands together. All the best and looking forward to hear more of your questions and everything in the future. Thank you very much, Professor Keith. Um, unfortunately, we're running out of time, so maybe we can only take one quick, very quick question. How does the rise of the metaverse change the skill sets that data science practitioners will have to pick up? How does it change? Um, how can students say future proof themselves for their um, career? Try things out new. That's the best thing I can say. If you haven't created an NFT yet, just go and create it. It takes like 30 seconds. If you haven't done, you know, download it, Second Life or something, it's free. Just try things out. Don't stop learning. And don't just be a consumer, be a maker. There's so many opportunities to make things now. I love that advice. Thank you so much, Professor Keith, once again.